So now we're going to talk about the importance of aerobic training in improving your motorcycling. Now, one of the key things that aerobic training does is it allows the growth of new blood vessels throughout your body, particularly around the muscles. Now, this is extremely important for thermoregulation, okay? Now, we know that those people that ride motorcycles all year round, and I count myself as one of those riders, trying to keep warm is extremely important. Now, wearing the right clothing is obviously um, uh, uh, the, the most fundamental thing that you can try and do to keep warm but when you when you're out on a long road ride in the winter then you're constantly going to be losing heat and eventually that's going to cause your core body temperature to to move in a downwards direction now by having uh, more muscle and having better blood supply to the muscle, which is what you would get from aerobic training, that would be an adaptation, you're able to have more blood going to the peripheries, to the hands, to the feet, the areas of the body that get cold first. And also, if you have more muscle and you have more capillarization, which basically means the muscle has more blood vessels growing in it as a result of aerobic training, then you also produce more heat because muscle is a muscle is, has greater metabolic activity than fat. Okay, now metabolic activity basically means the kind of energy requirements that the muscle has at rest when it's not doing anything. So when you produce energy, energy always produces, by, the byproduct of energy, sorry, is heat. So energy will always produce heat. So if you have increased muscle, you're gonna have increased metabolic activity, which is going to result in increased heat production, okay? As a byproduct of that energy use. Uh, so increased heat production. So that's, that increased heat production, the warm blood is going to be shifted about from the increased capillarization within the muscle, okay, from the formation of new blood vessels. Now, one thing that the heart is, uh, sorry, not the heart, one thing that aerobic training is very good at doing is allowing the heart to pump much more efficiently, okay? So it allows the, the left ventricle of the heart to become thicker, which basically means that as the ventricle pumps, with each pump you get more blood flow going around the body and again this is going to lead to resistance to fatigue okay so increased pumping capacity of the heart is one of the adaptations that occurs with uh, moderate intensity aerobic training we'll talk a little bit about that in a moment increased pumping capacity which basically means uh, increased oxygenated and nourished blood nourished with you know, energy ATP, which is the usable form of energy in our body, increase oxygenated and nourished blood going to the working muscles. So as the muscles are working to control the motorcycle, you're having an increased amount of uh, uh, oxygen delivery to all of the, the working muscles because they have better capillarization and, and the pump, the left ventricle of the heart is much more effic efficient at contracting. Uh, so those are the most important changes that you would uh, uh, have with aerobic training, incorporating aerobic training that would benefit you with your um, uh, in terms of your ability to ride, uh, but also again, it all comes back down to the fact that if you're able to resist fatigue longer, then you're able to concentrate on the road much more uh, easily than if you start to focus on the sensations of fatigue that are occurring in your body. So that's one of the main things that uh, increasing aerobic capacity uh, helps to alleviate in a motorcycle rider. So what type of aerobic training should we actually be including in our exercise training program? Now, there's two approaches that you can actually take. You can actually focus on doing short interval training, okay? So we'll put here short interval training, and this may consist of, so short intervals, this may consist of um, uh, either 60 meter sprints, sorry, I'll just correct that there, 60 meter uh, or 100 meter sprints, okay? So these are all out sprints on a straight uh, piece of uh, uh, tarmac or on an athletics track. Uh, and then you have a rest for about two or three minutes to allow your body to recover. And then you go again. So you do this five times, okay? And you can do this, you know, you can actually do uh, running, 
uh, you could do a sprint uh, on a cycle ergometer in a gym or on your road bike, you know, a push bike. Uh, so you could do this uh, also with rowing as well. Okay, so this would be um, very important for causing significant adaptations in your muscle architecture. So you'd have more capillarization, you'll get stronger tendons, ligaments. Um, you'll also have a better use of energy uh, in your muscle as well to power the muscle contractions. Uh, and you'll really feel all of the muscles in your body working. But this is very intense exercise. So it's very important that you have good rest periods and that you only do this on around about one to two days in a given week. Okay, so you don't want to be doing sprint interval training every single day. You need to give your body sufficient time uh, to recover. So, you know, you could do short intervals, which include uh, 60 meter or 100 meter sprints. You can also do uphill running as well. Okay, and again, you could do, you could either find a very long hill, okay, um, or, you can find uh, a reasonably short hill, which is very steep, which you run for all out, maximum effort for, you know, 30 seconds or longer. Uh, you can do, you know, so anywhere between 15 to 30 seconds of all out running on an uphill uh, uh, gradient will have significant benefits for uh, your, your aerobic fitness. Okay, your heart will be working really, really hard. Your left ventricle will, will become very thick and you'll get increased uh, blood vessel formation throughout the body. Um, which will obviously, obviously lead to efficient transportation of oxygen. So uphill running is another way that you can incorporate short interval training uh, into your routine. Um, so that's one method that you can, you can actually use. Now, the other method is to actually use what would be considered as kind of like, not interval training, but moderate intensity, moderate intensity, longer duration, longer duration activities, okay? So we'll just put activities here. Um, now in here, you'd obviously get rid of the 60 meter or 100 meter uh, sprints. In fact, what we would actually consider doing is running and you know you could run at any any distance okay the, the aim here is not to go all out the aim is to have a pace which you're comfortable with where you can push a little bit and also uh, back off a little bit so you have phases where you push and phases where you stop ultimate get goal is to have moderate intensity where your heart rate is high and you're feeling that you're doing exercise but it's not going to kill you okay so you could do a five kilometer run or as you get fitter, you could progress up to uh, a 10 kilometer run. Okay, so those park runs that they do on a Saturday, nine o'clock in the morning, great way to actually get yourself out and about and get into a regular routine. Um, but running for, you know, 20 to 30 minutes, okay, and what you would try to do is aim to do something like this. If you're gonna go for moderate intensity, longer duration activities, aim for three to four days. Okay, so you do three to four days. You could also do cycling, rowing. Um, you can do all uh, circuit training as well. Um, all of those would count towards your kind of cardiovascular or cardio as it's known in, in gyms, uh, which will promote those cardiovascular adaptations occurring to help with your motorcycle, uh, motorcycling as well. Okay, so uphill running, incredibly important. Again, you can choose to do uh, a longer route which incorporates some hills as well. Okay, so you can run these hills, not all out as you would do with the interval training, you can run much more steadily and just really feel the, the effects on your muscle as you counter gravity and your heart works hard to get the oxygen, oxygenated blood to, to your muscle. So, you know, you can include a, a variety of exercises, running, cycling, rowing, circuit training, uh, uphill running, um, you know, if you, if it, you, in, within here as well, you can consider walking, okay? So some people who have motivational issues may not want to do activities like this because um, it's not so easy to really get out and about running. So walking is a good place to start. If you've got a dog, you can start walking the dog. If you go to work by bus, well, most people go by a motorbike, but you can 
park a little bit further away from work and walk or take uh, stairs instead of lifts and escalators. So there's a number of things that you can actually do. Now for all of those people that ride motorbikes that have arthritis, uh, what I would suggest for, for, for you guys is to actually consider doing non-impact based activities. So cycling, um, swimming is another really good exercise for motorcycling because it works all of the muscles of the body uh, and in particular for people that have uh, osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis where the impact of uh, running would cause further deterioration to the joints, swimming is a very good alternative um, uh, to, th to, to those exercises. So in essence, as long as you're doing something for 20 to 30 minutes, um, which is what we're talking about when we, when we mean longer durations. We're talking about something between 20 to 30 minutes. Okay, so as long as you're doing 20 to 30 minutes of uh, moderate intensity activities consisting of these types of exercises or similar, then you will start to get the adaptations. And if you're unfit at the moment, then you can start with a much lower intensity and progress as, as you start to get fitter.